late last year, Hyundai launched the new Grand i10. Bigger, longer, wider, as always, grew up a little bit on the new generation. A real standout feature on certain of the models, and especially when you go up to the fluid spec, which is the higher spec, is the very interesting LED daytime running lights that frame the grill over there. It's just a very different little feature. You can see nice headlights over here, little fog lights over there, LED fog lights, quite a deep air dam at the front as well. So it's got a lot of little features like that. You come around over here, and I'm going to keep pointing out differences between fluid and motion spec being the motion being the higher spec. On motion you get nice 14 inch mag wheels over there and you can see very very neat. You've got the indicators built into the mirror over there and if you come and have a look over here you open up the back you'll see for a smaller car the space in the rear seat. You look over there lots of legroom. Well done Hyundai Isofix in the back now which wasn't always on all your cars. Also you see on this version you do have a leatherette seat covering with very neat red accent stitching on it and important in the center over there at the back you have got aircon vents and even a 12 volt below 12 volt outlet for the rear seat passengers a nice feature to have on a smaller car in particular also very neat is the fact that you do have electric windows all round on the car you come over here quite an interesting little feature over here something i haven't really seen before is on the rear seat pillar the GI10 logo, Grand I10 of course, and note the treatment over here on the C-pillar which almost gives you that floating roof effect people like to refer to. So again, quite neat. You pop open the boot and well it's a standard, very simple, two-thirds, one-third split on the rear seats which you like to see and which is a good feature and you have got a full-sized steel spare wheel over there. So full-size wheel at least even if it's not a mag to match the others your boot space of about 300 liters which is fair for a smaller car like this and of course dropping seats will expand it the Grand i10 comes in 1 liter and 1.2 liter format and of course one of the features again on the fluid versions is rear park distance control beepers so that's important you don't get that on the cheaper motion version either the one litre three cylinder little petrol engine puts out 49 kilowatts, 94 newton meters of torque. That's small, but this is a small to medium sized little hatch and certainly quite peppy and the power is quite actually more than adequate when you consider the engine that's involved. Let's go inside. Starting off behind the wheel, and as always, we show you the figures to start with. You can see fairly plain dash, but quite neat, a quite interesting design with the circles and everything else. But have a look, we've done 338 kilometers on this test so far, and unfortunately, you've got to press that little button over there to change your trip computer. But what I want to show you is this 320 still in the tank on a 40 litre tank, so not bad, but look at that, 5.9 litres per hundred we've averaged on this test so far. Done some nice open road cruising, which obviously will help, but that's an impressive figure, I think, in anybody's book. You come down on this version, of course, you do get your multi-function steering wheel, which has got all the controls you need. I don't think I have to say too much about that. And on the door over here, you've got locking, which activates when you pull off. And I said just now, you have got mirror, uh, electric windows all around. You've also got a feature over here, height adjustment for the headlights, just a setting over there. And let me tell you, the driver's seat is also height adjustable. Another feature I showed you, the red stitching on the seats just now is you notice the red trim around the air vents and even near the gear lever over here on the gator for the gear lever which on this model again is leather as is the steering wheel you come up over here on the center and you've got your infotainment screen which is standard i did mention just now you don't get a reverse camera which is a pity i would have liked to have seen one you do get that park distance control on this model but you do get of course the infotainment screen it's got apple carplay and android auto which is very important and something else that i found quite interesting look here there's a usb there and there's another one down here below the aircon controls 
so you have got two USBs up front and as I said earlier the 12 volt at the back so you've got quite useful over there you've got your air conditioning very effective works nicely and nice easily and something I have noticed on the new Hyundai's recently note how clean and uncluttered the center stack is and I find that quite nice I must be honest just that it's uncluttered generally and Hyundai seem to have actually done a very good job of that you've got an interesting it's plastic yes on the dash but you've got a funny sort of treatment that they're almost trying to make it look a bit like carbon fiber or something like that <laughs> yes we know it's not but it does look good it looks neat and let me tell you in typical Hyundai fashion it's all put together very very nicely very well and fit finish etc this car's got 6,000 k's on the clock now and you can feel nothing rattling etc you come down over here you've got your five speed manual gearbox typical of smaller cars these days light easy the clutch light easy it's a very simple easy car to drive around town which is exactly what you want if you really wanted there is even an automatic version as well in the one liter or the 1.2 I mentioned the artificial leather seats that you get etc on the fluid versions that you don't you get just normal cloth on the motion so these are the differences between the two I, I like to actually keep mentioning differences between the two cars the 49 kilowatts 94 Newton meters well in a car of this size it's nice and light although it's spacious it certainly is more than adequate and I must say on a open road cruise yesterday where we did 130 kilometers each way down to Paris it actually was quite a pleasure at 120 on the open road little bit of tire noise but beyond that it was pretty good I must say so well done on that as well that you have that it is perfectly suited to open road driving as well standard on both models is a one-year 15,000 kilometer service plan and of course you do get that Hyundai warranty that goes up to seven years 200,000 kilometers on drivetrain five years 150 on the entire vehicle which is something Hyundai are market leading on well what's it gonna cost you of course that becomes the point this one as it is is 213,000 Rand you want to cut out features like the leather like the <coughs> mag wheels like the rear park distance control and one or two other little features you can cut out you drop down to 191 900 so it's quite a big difference between the two but you can see the differences on the car as well you also do lose those LED daytime running lights if you drop down so that's a feature one must think about very very carefully overall the Grand i10 has been Hyundai's biggest seller in South Africa for the last few years and not surprising in my book I think they've improved it bigger look better wider etc and they've thrown a lot more kit at you a lot more spec to make it great value for money in the current market you're looking for a car in this category you cannot ignore the grand i10 for motor matters i'm lnr see you next time